series introduction to computational drug design uh, the series is co-organized co by Schrodinger and PCI um, I would like to take a moment to thank our collaborators um, and also the IT team of JSS and uh, Manipal for hosting these sessions um, I have a few announcements today before we start today's session. Um, so the first thing that I, we are getting a, a lot of queries is about the evaluation license. So if you have mentioned, uh, if you've seen today, some of you have received an email asking you to send us the machine IDs. So if you receive that email, please send us the machine ID, the information, you have to send us the whole file in order for us to send you the uh, the license so once you receive this email you have to write back to us and send us the file so when you send us the machine id file we will take about 24 hours and you will get the license so some of you have this um, apprehension that today all the demo sessions are starting and uh, like so when how to get the file by today how to get the license by today and start the work so i would like to assure you that these videos will be there on the channel on jss channel and on manipal channel so you can go back and refer to them while you're working on your license so please do not worry about that we are not gonna take these videos away from the channel even after the uh, the series ends we still want to keep these right so please don't worry about that also uh, i would like to tell you that please register to this course if you haven't done so so if you do not register you will not receive these emails so also some of you are not receiving these emails that could be because your servers so what happens in the institutional email sometimes they will block the bulk emails so i have received a couple of uh, complaints about this on this regarding that people are not receiving the bulk emails sent by dd course so if you are registered already and you are not receiving these emails you can please write to us at ddcourse.schrodinger.com and we will send you the emails so do not worry about the evaluation emails we are sending them ourselves so you will be getting those only the mass emails that we are sending about the upcoming sessions about the evaluation forms and about the SOC discount codes. If you haven't received any of those emails, please write to us and we will send you the required information, right? The other thing is about the hardware. Again, if you do not have the required hardware, we will suggest you to do not, do not go for the evaluation license because it will not be a pleasant experience. It will be slow. Uh, I'd rather suggest you to go for the Schrodinger online course. So the difference between the evaluation license and the Schrodinger online course is that evaluation license, it is installed in your own machine. Okay, so in your own computer, this license will be installed and you will be able to uh, pl play around, practice what you learn during the, uh, the, during the demo sessions. And you can also use it to, um, you know, work on your own research project if you have, if you have that, right? But the difference between SOC is um, Schrodinger online course has its own syllabus. So when you uh, register to SOC, you will be, you will have access to Schrodinger software through the cloud, but you will not be allowed to work on your own project you will only be allowed to use that cloud access to work on the SOC training or the tutorials, right? You can play around with it. You can learn, learn the software through the cloud, but you cannot use it. You cannot download any data from there. So it is not allowed. You will not be able to use it for your own research. So these are the two main differences. SOC will have a, a syllabus there will be a progression you will start with basic and then you will end with a case study so if you're looking to learn the software soc is a right alternative to evaluation 
but if you're looking to work on your project evaluation is the only way you can do that you cannot use SSC license for your own work I hope that is clear now if you do not have hardware now and you want to take the license later in time when your college is open when your university is open that is absolutely fine you can just write to us on our emails or on DD course which will also be active right so you can write to us and you can say we I attended this PCI workshop uh, the webinar series and I would like to eval take the evaluation license now so that is absolutely fine if you want to take it in future we will be providing your license just because you uh, attended this workshop the other thing about SOC is we have already sent the discount code I hope uh, you have received them if you haven't received them please write to us and we will send those discount codes to you um, the next session of SOC is going to start on November 2nd the registrations will end on October 26th so make sure that you register and pay before October 26th the usual cost of SOC is uh, $350 for students and uh, $475 for uh, non-students but as a special offer for you guys for the attendees of PCI workshop you will be getting the SOC for $125 so please make sure that you register and uh, you put in the discount code so that you can uh, pay $125 as opposed to 350 and please make sure that you select a student option while um, while you register for this course the other thing is in order to download and install our software you will require our uh, you will require a web website account in schrodinger.com so if you do not have that please make sure that you log into www.schrodinger.com slash request account there will be a small form please make sure that you fill out that form and uh, once you fill that out uh, you your account will be active within 48 hours if it's taking longer for you if there is in case any delay you can write to us and we can help you uh, get the account activated soon or you can also write to help at schrodinger.com right um, the other thing that I would like to tell you is about the office hours so what happens is sometimes uh, you might not be able to attend these live sessions and you might be attending the sessions um, after it is live so we are not here to answer your questions and you might have some of those so what we have here is we have office hour that is one hour dedicated question Q and A sessions for you uh, from 4:30 to 5:30 p.m. every Thursday. So if you have some of the questions that you were not able to ask during the live session, and or in any case you were not able to attend the live session, you will be able to. Um, go uh, attend our live session which will be through zoom uh, so the zoom link is also there on our uh, website page at www.shodinger.com slash dd course so you can go there and get the zoom uh, link from there the link and the password both both are required for you to join this session so uh, that's all the announcements uh, for me today if you have any questions you can leave them in the uh, chat window of the YouTube video and I can take them up uh, at the later in the later Q&A session after the demo for today uh, So today we have the demo session of uh, Maestro which is our uh, our Interface that is what you use in order to run any calculation on Schrodinger suites so during this presentation or the demo session if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat section of the YouTube video uh, we will take the Q&A session at the end of the session so uh, Dr. Prachal will be taking the Maestro session now um, the control is yours Dr. Prachal yeah, uh, thanks Shadria uh, am I audible 
Yes, you are audible. Okay, great. Uh, okay, let me share the screen. Yeah, thank you very much for the information. So, seems everything is fine. And, uh, okay, so, okay, can anybody please confirm me whether the screen is visible? The screen is visible. Okay, great. Your voice is a little... Um, no. No, it's not low. There is some kind of a background disturbance. It could be your headphone. Okay, let me check first with the headphone has. Let me switch. Okay, so what about now? Is it fine or it is still same? It's still the same. Still the same? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I made little bit changes. So is it fine or it's still same? Um, I think it's fine. Uh, you can go ahead and I'll stop you if it's uh, yeah, much of a difference. Be great. Yeah. yeah, in case if you have any disturbance, please uh, stop me. Okay, sure. Okay, then I'll just uh, share the screen. Okay, so what about now? Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. So very good morning to all of you guys. And thank you very much for joining the session again. So today onwards, uh, we are going to see the actual demos on the various modules and various tasks, which we have learned from past two weeks. So all tasks, uh, which are covered in the computer aided drug designing. So all those methodologies, we have seen it in a detail at the basics level. And we have also got the overview of how to perform it using Maestro. But uh, from today onwards, we will see actual demo on the software and how to see it in software, how to do it in software, where are the buttons and all those aspects of the visualizer we are going to cover in coming lectures. So today is one of the most critical day of uh, our demo presentations, which I would consider because it is about the visualizer, specifically Maestro visualizer. So I am going to specifically explain about uh, the Maestro visualizer, how it looks and where are the buttons where you can uh, explore all other options which task you can perform through maestro visualizer where to find button how to find how, what to find and all those things uh, i'm going to explain you in a stepwise manner so please be with us and have patience so almost all of the aspects are being covered in this presentation so uh, so that's why you need to look carefully but uh, one of the things which I personally felt is uh, it is very easy to browse through Maestro. And uh, I hope the same you will also feel afterwards. Once you start uh, using the visualizer, you will also feel it is so, uh, so easy to go through the visualizer. But we will see it in a step-by-step -step manner. The only thing is whatever I am explaining here, you need to follow those instructions in a step-wise manner. So this is what we are going to discuss it today. And so I, I consider this uh, maestro visualizer as a molecular microscope. Though this uh, term like molecular microscope seems to be uh, something for experimentalists, like uh, your uh, microscope, actual microscope, or uh, your something called uh, whatever microscope you have learned about in the practical session so but with this visualizer we can actually see the molecule at atomic uh, detail or or at atomic level so that is why i call it as a molecular microscope and uh, with the help of this visualizer you can actually see 
what are the things are present inside the structure and how to see it so as i said before that uh, here is my email id and phone number in case of any queries you can always contact me uh, for further queries in case if your answers are not given answered in this session you can always contact me so before going further so one of the first step is how to start maestro in your life so how to start it it's pretty easy like uh, whoever is a windows user you just need to look on the once you install the software and once you install the license and everything is fine then uh, you will have a maestro icon on, on your desktop you just need to see it on a desktop and double click on maestro icon and it will start the maestro visualizer sometime it takes time it may take time but uh, it will start if installation is done correctly so this is for windows user for linux users if you are using linux you just need to go to terminal you know where to where to look for the terminal and then in terminal you just need to type the simple command maestro m a e s t r o so maestro is the command once you type the command it will start the maestro visualizer in case of mac users if uh, you have macbook so you can just you need to go to applications and in applications you will find the maestro option so you just need to click on it and it will start the maestro icon so once it start the visualizer it looks like some uh, something like this it will show you this particular visualizer but of course without these labels so we will see in just a overview what are the options present with the maestro visualizer so it looks like this and you can see here there are various options present so don't be confused at this step we will go through each option one by one in uh, slow so slowly we will go through it so whatever the region which you are seeing here in black color is a workspace so workspace is nothing but the space where you can see the molecule what is present in the molecule how it looks like or whatever is uh, the 3d coordinates of your molecule you can see it here on the workspace this region is called as workspace so now onwards whenever i say workspace means you always need to look into this big middle region which is in black color mostly black background so this is called workspace so then coming to the in some initial buttons like here on the top left you can see various uh, various options we call it as selection bar where you can see this uh, cursor button where you can select something you can click on something and then it will be selected then there are various selection modes like a for here you can see the atom a is for atom atom is the atomic selection mode then you will have molecule selection mode m is for molecule selection mode and r is for residue selection mode mode in this way you will have different uh, selection modes then uh, i mean of course you can select it uh, manually but also we have quick select buttons here you can see p l s so p stands for obvious protein l stands for ligand so if you want to simply select complete protein if you click on p it will automatically select the protein if you click on l it will automatically select the ligand in case if solvents are present this s Uh, button will also be active you can select sol all solvent molecules in just one go if you are not happy with this uh, automatic selection mode you can also customize your selection for example i want to select residue number 2 3 and 4 so i can have this customized selections button here then uh, you can have like various uh, center to workspace buttons here means fit to workspace we will see these options Uh, these options are basically present straight in front of you in the middle of uh, the top middle so it says like fit everything to the workspace fit selection to the workspace fit uh, ligand to the workspace so these are the fitting button means whenever you feel like something is missing on your visualizer and you are not able to see the uh, molecule on your visualizer just you need to give a try to fit all those things in on the workspace so it will show you everything which is present on the workspace then there is a style button 
so in style style means rendering so you can have different type of uh, visualizations like styles so lines view thick tube thin tube then wall stick view then uh, space field view and so there is there are various type of views for each atom to visualize then you can show and hide uh, view using this i button i is for eyes and then uh, you can also color it differently there are various color uh, coloring modes which are present with the schrodinger you can see it one by one then you can also have labels applied to your uh, the selection what is present on the workspace you can have ribbon button if you want to see protein or dna in ribbon view you can hide or you can show the surface so surface is surface button is also there you can also deal with the specific hydrogen like all hydrogen or non polar hydrogen or polar hydrogen so these buttons are also here here in middle you will find the build button and build means if you want to build a structure you want to add a atom you want to add hydrogen you want to perform quick minimization so these options are present in build button we will see it one by one and here there is a option for job monitor means you can monitor your job uh, whether it is running or whether it is completed or whether it is died so you can monitor it using job button and the most important option here is a task button so task button is present on the top right so in this task button basically why i say it is most important because all of the options to perform various tasks like molecular docking pharmacopoeia mapping homology modeling all those tasks are options are present in the task button so you just need to click on it and you will find how to see various options coming to the left left side of panel you can see there are various small small quick shortcut buttons are present here for example for ligand interaction diagram you have button for uh, binding site in surface view just like this you will have the button you have a button to measure uh, distance between atom or angles such type of quick, quick buttons are also present on the top and in the below that on left hand side you will find the section called workspace navigator so workspace navigator is nothing but it is just a it is in the format of table which consists of different entries and entries which are present in the list so while doing your task you will come across various type of multiple entries uh, which uh, which uh, forms while doing your various tasks for example you load the protein it will create the entry for protein you load the ligand it will create a entry for ligand in this way it will create various entries and you will see all those entries in a uh, sequential manner in all rows so there are various rows and you can see all those entries in workspace navigator tab so that's workspace navigator and you will also find below that there is another section called structure hierarchy section structure hierarchy means nothing but whatever is present on your workspace it will show the same thing on structure hierarchy section so structure hierarchy means for example you have the workspace consists of protein and ligand and solvent so structure hierarchy means what are the components of that structure which is present on workspace it will show in structure hierarchy so for example in this complete complex it will have different entries so one entry is for protein one entry is for ligand one entry is for solvent so in this way there will be different entries you will see it actually and uh, so you just need to remember those terms like there is a structure hierarchy section there is workspace navigator section so in this way and you will see what is inside it actually then there is a 2d overlay option means uh, uh, it basically shows you what is a 2d structure of ligand specifically which is present inside the uh, which is present inside the protein structure or which is present on the workspace so you can directly see Uh, how this ligand looks and what is the truly structure of your ligand then uh, below that you will find the option about status for whatever present is on the workspace like how many atoms are present uh, on the workspace how many amino acid residues are present on the workspace then how many are displayed how many are selected and all other things uh, whatever is related to the workspace number of atom number of entries number of chains what is selected what is not selected what is shown what is not shown all that uh, minute minute very minute detail and statistics is you can find it in a, this status bar option 
then coming back to the bottom right you will see this uh, six uh, five toggle button so these toggle buttons it has very importance because it's very uh, it's kind of shortcuts to see and hide various things so at this point you just remember there are five toggle buttons to show surface to hide surface you just need to click on this button it will automatically show and hide the surface to show ribbons and to hide the ribbons you just need to click on this toggle button then uh, to show and hide interactions means non bonded interactions like hydrogen bonding interaction or uh polar polar contact or any other contact you just need to click on this interaction button and it will show to show and hide labels you will have this label to the button so in this way there are various components and uh, not uh, forget to mention below the bottom is a sequence viewer so if your protein is present on the workspace so it will also display automatically the sequence of that particular protein so what is sequence and it is also interactive so remember one thing in maestro all options are interactive as you move your mouse on that particular option on that particular entry it will show all that uh, detail about that particular entry or detail about that particular point below so this is what the sequence viewer is so this is how overall it looks like and we will see it actually how it is present on the uh, maestro visualizer so now let's switch to the maestro visualizer and we will see uh, how it looks like yeah so uh, can anybody confirm please uh, whether the screen is still shared uh, yes prajwal you can see your screen great thanks okay so uh, the very first thing which you need to see is uh, so as i am using windows machine so as i said on in windows machine there is a desktop and on desktop you will find the option icon for maestro so maestro with the version number so for me uh, the version number which is installed here is 12.4 so it might change for you if you have you have installed another version or updated version so the icon wherever it is present you just need to double click on it and it will start the maestro but before that i will just quickly show you whenever you install the software you need to get the license file and you need to install that license file so how to install that license file is first uh, you need to install the software and once you install the software you will find the configure option so in windows for example you can see the in the uh, search bar you can type configure and you will find this green color right button so uh, basically uh, this green color button is for uh, configure software so you just need to click on it it will open the configure software window for you so it looks like this window it will pop up on your screen so it say it, basically this is the uh, licensing Uh, configure Schrodinger software button in which you can you can provide the license uh, file. So for that uh, you have option here add licenses. So here you just need to select uh, the thing I have a license file because uh, you will have the license file sent from by Schrodinger person. So you just need to select that particular option I have a license file and just browse your license file wherever it is present. so you just need to browse your license file and it will that's done so say open and done so once you have provided your license file just need to click on install license and that's it it will display the message like valid license found if you find this uh, message here it means it is done everything is done you don't need to worry about it and that's it now next task is to open the maestro so as i suggested just need to look for the maestro icon in this of windows just double click on it and it will open the maestro panel maybe sometime it takes a minute based on your computer speed but don't worry about it it will open so for me it happened within few seconds so this is what the maestro visualizer looks like so this is what as i said in middle whatever you see uh, this black screen is called as workspace 
then there are various options present uh, for quick selection here on the top of uh, our window then there are various options present on it just like any other software like file edit select workspace so in this way you will have different options present with you you just need to go through each option one by one then there is a section called workspace navigator on the left hand side as i said it will have various entries in the tabulated format then there is a section called structure hierarchy so because nothing is present on the workspace so nothing is present in structure hierarchy but we will see it one by one how everything comes into picture then uh, there are various selection modes like atom residue chain molecules and entries so selection mode is nothing but if you want to select atom you need to have a means atomic selection mode if you want to select residue you need to have residue selection mode and we will see it one by one if you can observe you can see on the mouse there is a sign written a means atomic selection if you change it to residue you will find there is a r letter on the mouse so that means residue selection mode so it also comes from the keyboard buttons like if you press a it will change to atomic selection mode if you press r button on key keyboard it will go to residue selection mode if you press c button on the keyboard it will uh, show you the chain selection mode the same thing is also getting appended here in selection mode then you will have this bit button and all other uh, options are being activated one by one so we will see and most important thing as i said there is a task button on top right so you can see the task button where you will have all other options to perform various tasks like molecular docking md simulation pharmacopoeia mapping and ligand preparation protein preparation and all other so you will have this task button so let's start exploring the software first so to explore this software we will try to see it in a task wise manner so for example the first task which is simplest task for me is to uh, draw a 2d structure of molecule so for example if i want to draw a 2d structure of molecule there is a button called edit but uh, before that one thing which always you need to remember that's that's the must do thing is whenever you open the maestro whenever maestro starts so first thing you need to do is go to file and say change working directory so change working directory is nothing but you are specifying the directory where you want to store your all of the data while doing your project so maybe you don't want to store it somewhere else where you don't know where the location is uh, then in such cases it will be difficult to find out your data uh, where your project data is present so that's why it is always necessary to mention the customized directory where you want to store the data so for example this is very very important thing and you always need to uh, do this thing so just go to file go to change working directory click on it and browse wherever you want to store your data so for example i just want to store my data in the folder on desktop so the desktop is so for example i just say the name project cad so i have created a directory on desktop and i have selected this particular directory as a direct uh, as a working directory for me where i want to store my data so just say choose define your directory and say choose that's it it is done and you can see here on the top there is a path written so for example this path is c user prajwal one drive desktop and project cad so it means all of the data is going to be present inside this particular directory one by one so it means i don't need to look anywhere else i'll just afterwards i'll just go to that directory and retrieve my all data so that is about the directory where you want to save your data the next very important task which you always need to do is save your project so for that just go to file and there is option called save project as 
so save project as you can resemble uh, resemble you to the similar thing like for example you are writing a manuscript or any document and you just need to save that document otherwise you, whatever you have written it, it will be lost afterwards so it means just saving the document same as you need to save the project but the main uh, important thing which comes with the save project is it's a auto saved uh, thing so means just like whenever you write it in a document you need to keep it saving for uh, uh, forever like uh, otherwise uh, whatever changes you have made it will not be saved in case of document but in case of maestro because i said it is very easy and user friendly so it is auto saved it is with auto saved option so you don't need to save it again once you have saved your project once and then afterwards whatever task you do it will be automatically saved in that project and even after 10 years if you open the same project it will start at the same point wherever you have left it 10 years before so that's the advantage which comes with the maestro so you need to just save your project so once you click on save a project as it will automatically direct you to the working directory you can see here there is an option for working directory and you can see the path same path which is project cat so in that uh, it gives me option to save my project so i am just saving the project with some name like uh, maestro visualization and this is the name of my project so always remember to give some reasonable name to your project because this is this is going to be with forever and you, you should always uh, know that this is the name which i have given for this particular task or for this particular session so it will be saved in dot prj format so that's the unique extension prj stands for project so you just need to open that project afterwards if you want to open it so now i am just saving this particular project and with the name of maestro visualization and that's it it is saved so you can see even on the top it is written the same name of project which is maestro visualization dot prj this is name of project onwards and this is the directory name so these are the two most important steps which you always need to do whenever you start your maestro so again just go to file there is a option first thing is change working directory and next thing is to save your project once these two things are done then you will be sure about your data is not going to loss your data is not going to be scattered anywhere else it will be there in the same folder which you have specified and one thing uh, is very much unique with maestro like all of your data is being auto saved all of your intermediate files and everything input output and all things whatever you do onwards will be saved in that particular directory and there is no chance to lose your data at any given point until and unless you manually delete delete your data so it will be always saved so these are the two things which you always need to do so now we will see the first task to draw a structure structure in 2d so for that you will have option present in edit menu so there is edit button in that edit button you will find the option called 2d sketcher just click on 2d sketcher and it will open the 2d sketcher maybe this is the similar type of sketch sketcher you have seen so far with any other software so it the same simple thing you will have simple button so you have for example ready to use ring structure ready to use various functional groups which you can use ready to use bonds in case of uh, something is wrong you can erase it in case of something is wrong you can undo it or redo it you can select various things so it's the same thing so let's draw a simple structure let's say paracetamol so for that paracetamol structure i need a benzene ring so i have just click on benzene and place it on the sketcher then i need some single bonds so i have with some functional groups or need to convert it into double bond or triple bond or need to make the branch so single bonds can be drawn by single click and double bond can be simply drawn up by one more click on the single bond just like this and you will see the there is a bond converted to the double bond if i want to make it triple i'll click it again so it will be triple bond but if i feel there is something wrong i need to do undo so you will have that undo button just undo and it will be done 
so to change the functional groups like uh, for example i need hydroxyl group so i have just click on oxygen and uh, while drawing the structure one thing which carefully you need to wait for is the point of attachment as you can see here this particular gray spot is for point of attachment so until unless this point of attachment comes uh, front that that you should not draw anything else so once you will have this point of attachment you just need to click on it and it will add the functional group so similar way I, if i need to put nitrogen somewhere so and I need to put it here and I just uh, selected that for a functional group and click it on the nitrogen and then it will automatically substitute it and then I want to add carbonyl group here so I just wait for point of attachment and place oxygen there. So you can also observe here um, there is automatic addition of hydrogen on oxygen on nitrogen and wherever valency needs to be satisfied. So it automatically adds hydrogen. So for hydrogen, you don't need to worry about it. It will take care of all that hydrogen. So this is the way you can draw a simple structure. In case if you want to select that particular structure, you can select it quickly using select button. And uh, if you want to move it, you can also move it in, uh, if you want to do it. So for example, there is a button to move it and you can move it in case if you want to. So in this way, there are various functional groups. So once you have drawn this 2D structure, you need to basically convert it into 3D. So to convert it into 3D, actually you don't need to do anything. It will automatically get converted into 3D. So for that, you just need to save your entry. So the, on the below, there is an option called save as new. So just need to click on save as new and give some reasonable name and molecule. For example, this is paracetamol molecule. So I have given PCM and just say okay as you say okay you can see it will automatically get loaded on the workspace and it automatically added all hydrogen in the molecule you can see this white color atoms are hydrogens and you can also see this structure particularly how it looks like at the same time in the workspace navigator you'll see there is an entry with name called pcm so this is the same entry which you will have for the molecule. So in case if I want to further modify this particular molecule to create a new molecule out of it. So let's say I have just, I'm just substituting something else on this particular ring. And then this is the new structure for me. So what I'll do, I'll just, this is new structure like a substituted paracetamol. And let's say uh, I need to save this particular entry. So I just save it with some other name like uh, PCM2 which is kind of modified one and just say OK and it will automatically put this new entry on the workspace and you can see this new entry is being done and with the modified amino group on it. So and now you can see here on the workspace navigator you will have two entries. So one is for PCM, one is for PCM2, so modified PCM. So this is the way how you draw structure in 2D and how do you convert that particular structure in 3D. It's automatic thing. You just need to save it. That's it. So you will have two entries with you. So let's see one of the critical thing here for the visualization on workspace navigator is you will have the first column called row. So row means one, two, three, four, how many rows are there? Then there is a column called in. In means whatever is present on the workspace. So whenever this blue circle is on, it means it is present on the workspace. Then there is a third column called title. So title means the name of molecule. And whenever this name is in a blue strip, it means it is selected. So there are two important words which we are coming across afterwards is one is on workspace and one is selected. So let's imagine here PCM entry is selected because it's in a blue color and the same PCM entry is present on the workspace because the in section, this blue circle is on. So in another case, you can see the same PCM is selected, the first entry, but what is present on workspace is the second entry. 
So second entry means PCM2. So you can see here there is a modified functional group here. So it means this is the new entry which is present. So don't be ever confused and always be cautious about what is present on the workspace and what is selected. So whatever strip is there, blue color, that entry is selected and when blue circle is on, means that entry is present on the workspace. So now your PCM is selected and PCM is also included on the workspace. So now let's see there are some options. For example, selection mode. So as I said, there is an atom selection mode, there is residue selection mode, chain selection mode. So what is selection mode? If I want to select a particular atom, I will have atomic selection mode. The same thing is being reflected on the mouse with letter A means atom is selected. If I want to select uh, atom in this way, I can select various atoms. If I want to select multiple atoms, I can use uh, control button. So press control button and you can select multiple atoms. You need to hold control buttons. In this way, you can select multiple atoms. So if you want to quickly select, uh, you can just simply drag it using mouse. You can select multiple uh, atoms in this way with the mouse left click and hold uh, and drag it that's the selection mode if you want to select the complete molecule or residue you can just go to residue selection mode and select on any atom and it will select the complete molecule for you because this uh, single molecule is considered as a residue so this residue also implies to the amino acid residue or you can select it in just single click so this is the selection mode then there, uh, there are some mouse operations which you will have. So mouse operation means uh, most, most of the time you will have um, three button mouse plus scroll. So three button means left click, right click and the scroll button which is also a click. And, and you can also rotate your scroll button. So what, what are the various options? So if you simply hold your middle button. So middle button means scroll button click on it and hold it and move your mouse. It will rotate your molecule. Okay. If you press right click, you can translate your molecule. Hold your right click and move your mouse on. If you click on left button, it will basically select your molecule or select your atom. So that's the selection mode. Okay, and if you rotate your scroll, it will zoom in and zoom zoom out. That's the scroll button which you will have. So that's the thing which you always need to wait for. And these are the various mouse operations which you can do. The same mouse operation can also be done using keyboard button. So for this, you just need to remember only single button which is dot means full stop on the keyboard. So if you press your dot button on the keyboard, it will rotate your molecule. And if you remember that dot button, you just need to press two buttons around this particular dot. So there is a button called question mark or forward slash. Then there is a button for uh, semicolon or colon through which you can do some operation. Then there is a L button, L is for fitting. Then there is a K button for zooming. Then there is J button for zoom out. Then there are square bra uh, brackets. So those button you can press to rotate your molecule again. So in this way, you will have these buttons which are present around the dot button. And you can, if you press those button, you will see there are various uh, mouse operations, the same as mouse operations you will see. But it is always uh, suggested to use mouse, external mouse for your uh, molecular modeling uh, exercise. So that's the best uh, option which you will have. So next thing we will see is the rendering. So uh, as I said, uh, there is a workspace navigator section, which is in a tabulated format. You will have all entries. There is a structure hierarchy section below that. So in below that, as I said, you will have whatever is present on workspace, it will show you in the structure hierarchy. And you can see here there is a PCM, this, this molecule is present on the workspace. You can expand and collapse this group 
and you can see whatever are the elements which are present inside this particular molecule so this once you are, if you want to do any type of rendering with it you can simply do it with the plus button which is present in front of this particular uh, option so you can see whenever you move your mouse on it it will appear the plus button if you click on it it will simply show you all that style options you can change with your structure for example you can change it to lines thin tube thick tube ball stick view then you can have this uh, under walls view in this way you can change the various views of your molecule then uh, you can change the color of your molecule using this color button let's say i want to change it to pink carbon so always remember oxygen is represented in red color nitrogen is represented in blue color and rest of the carbon you can play with different colors like uh, green or blue or whatever you think of which is better for you to visualize you can play with it but the conventional color of hetero atoms will not change and you can also change the color of a complete molecule or with the, with the various type of color schemes like entry carbon or element or with the chain name chain name and there are many other color schemes which you will have for your exploration and you can see here the same options are also present in the same style button which is present on the top middle the same things are present here also you can change the all those things for your molecule in this way basically you can play with the different type of renderings different colors with respect to the molecule so this is what is about the molecule uh, let's imagine if you have drawn the structure and then afterwards you want to edit something with this molecule so as i said there is a edit button which you can use to edit your molecule so you will have that edit button and it will open the 3d builder so if i for example if i want to substitute something on uh, this particular nitrogen let's uh, this particular hydrogen let's say so i just need to select that particular uh, hydrogen and i can change which your functional group i want to put here so let's say let's put oxygen here and it will automatically get converted into oxygen if you feel like okay valency is not satisfied and we need to add hydrogen so you will have this hydrogen addition button so it will automatically add hydrogen to satisfy the valency so in this way you can uh, edit your structure in 3d also you can uh, change the various bonds for example i want to change this particular bond from double to single let's say so i have selected this particular bond and there are various bond option so i just want to make it uh, one more or one less so you can see now it is being converted into a uh, single bond but let's imagine like if valency is not satisfied i just need to add hydrogen on it and valency will be satisfied so this is the way you draw the structure and there is also a button for quick minimization so if you simply click to click on this quick minimization button it will automatically perform the minimization of this particular structure and it will give you a little bit energy minimized structure so now you can see there is a little bit distortion because of changing of the double bond to single bond so this is the way there are various options which are present in that 3d builder and you can explore all those options one by one so this is how you deal with the small molecules in general but uh, let's imagine if we are dealing with the protein structure so we can see the protein uh, structure so just uh, you can load basically your protein structure using this uh, file option so basically there are various options like you can already import the structure whatever is present with you in the directory or you have saved it in local directory you can simply click on import structure and load your molecule and th similarly there are various uh, type of file formats which are being supported by schrodinger you can see here there is list of file format maybe you have heard of sdf for mol mol2 pdb uh, smiles and in this way there are many such file formats which are present and to my knowledge almost all of the five file formats whichever you have heard all are being supported by schrodinger so you can open any type of file format uh, in the maestro so you always don't need to worry about it it will take care of everything or if you want to simply get pdb structure of protein from protein data bank if you know the pdb id you can use this get pdb option 
just uh, sim simply click on this get pdb option and type the pdb of your interest you can also put the chain name if it is necessary and there is a download button so just click on download it will if your uh, internet is connected it will automatically uh, get that structure from the protein data bank and here you will see how it looks like so basically this is the structure of protein which you get it from the protein data bank and uh, you can see there are many atoms present here but in this view probably you are not able to see what is specific atom or which is specific ligand present in it so for that as i said there is a 2d overlay button so that 2d overlay button you will find in this plus of tuple button so in this button you will have this option called 2d overlay if you simply on it it will display the 2d structure of ligand for you not only that but as i said uh, in status bar you will see how many number of atoms are present here how many atoms are displayed how many are selected how many residues are present how many residues are selected so for example if i select this particular residue let's say to, so it says it says 11 atoms are selected which belongs to the one residue and that many number of 2775 atoms are displayed so all that information my minute detail information is present here you can see to the structure and uh, in, let's say in structure hierarchy now you will have multiple options present here from this uh, workspace so on workspace there is a protein ligand complex which also consists of solvent molecules are present so you can see here there are three entries one for ligand one for protein one for solvent so basically you can change a uh, various renderings so let's see the protein in ribbons view which is very much familiar to you and you will have this ribbon button which shows you the ribbon scheme then there are various color schemes which are present you can change the it to single color or residue position or any type of coloring scheme you will have many different type of color schemes present here let's say secondary structure or residue position so this is the way you can visualize your protein and then if you want to see the particularly ligand where it is present you can go to the sign plus sign in front of ligand entry here so you can see this plus sign in front of ligand entry and you, you will change the rendering of your specific ligand and you can see your ligand is present somewhere here in this wonder wall view or you can change it to different different views if you want so same thing can also be applied to the solvent there is a plus sign in front of solvent and you can change it to other views like you can see this all water molecules so basically these are not water molecules but oxygen atoms which are mentioned in red color spheres so you can see how these water are present in the protein structure additionally you can change the also surface view of the protein let's say uh, there is a surface button and i have just changed it to surface view and in this way you can better view your protein in surface view where uh, uh, in which you can clearly see uh, the surface of protein is not even and there are many things where the, there are many pockets present in it where the water molecules are located on the surface or inside the protein or where the ligand is fitted inside the inside particular uh, uh, protein cavity you can see it you, you can observe it carefully so this is the way there are these are various renderings and let's imagine whenever you generate a surface it appears a s button in front of the entry in workspace navigator so you can always play with this button to show and hide your surface so let's say it uh, has hidden the complete surface it also shows the complete surface the same operation you can do using toggle button so as i said just remember there are toggle buttons for surface for cartoons so let's see this is the toggle uh, button for surface so i can just show and hide the surface using this particular button you can see here so it is pretty quick and the same thing is also applied for the cartoons there is a cartoon toggle button you can show and hide the cartoons whatever is present with you so in this way you can play a little bit with the rendering of protein structure and uh, there is one more option here for your selections so as i said you will have different selection let's say residue or atom or molecules or chain so whenever there is a residue selection mode called r on the cursor 
you can see you can simply click on any atom of the residue and it will select the residue if you hold the control button you can also select multiple uh, amino acid residue in case of uh, residue selection mode if i change this selection mode to molecule let's say it will select the complete molecule if i change this selection mode to chain it will select the complete chain for me so the complete chain is protein so and in pr protein also in structure hierarchy section you can see protein is made up of chain a and in chain a there are amino mean, list of amino acid residues which are present with their amino acid residue numbers so you can also explore each residue one by one if you want to so these are the various options which are present in structure hierarchy so one of the most important thing is is the sequence here and this is very very unique with the schrodinger you will have just a single button to view your sequence in different format so for that you will have this plus button on bottom right in bottom right you will find the option called sequence viewer so if you on this option it will show you the sequence of this particular protein which is present on the screen so you can see this all sequence and as i said this is let's say you see the label of this sequence which is for 2b33 protein and chain a that's the label and there is a sequence and as i said it is all interactive as you move your mouse on it it will show you what is the residue name what is residue number and in this way you can explore the complete sequence so to explore the complete sequence it is uh, pretty easy means you can see the numbers and residues but not only that if you want to see it one by one so let's see i have selected this particular amino acid residue and and 66 which is aspartic 66 and i need to show it where it is present on the screen so i have just selected it and there is a particular button called fit to workspace this particular button if you click it will automatically highlight that particular residue for me on the screen so you can see here this particular residue which is present and it is highlighted the same thing is also selected in the sequence if i want to see next so next means n n is for next so if i press n button on the keyboard it will automatically go to the next and you can see here it is showing me the next and it it is automatically highlighting that next residue which is selected on the workspace in this way you can explore each residue selectively and you can see uh, what what are the elements present in the residue whether something is missing something is wrong you can correct it and if you want to let's say go back the, so for go back it is previous so next is for next sequence and the key button from the keyboard is for previous so you can see how selection is moving and you can see it so in this way there are various color schemes so whenever something is selected you can get rid of that selection by simply clicking on some empty space so just click on some empty space and it will get rid of selection and now you will be surprised to see like i cannot see the complete protein structure on the screen so in such case what we can do we can simply click on this particular fit view to all visible objects so if you simply click on it it will automatically fit the all uh, atoms or everything which is present on the workspace to this particular visualizer so same way Uh, if you uh, want to do it through keyboard so you can also do it through keyboard for example you just need to press z button z is doing same task as that of fit to view if i press simply z button it will automatically fit the complete view on the visualizer so this is how you fit so whenever at some point like you are feeling i, I cannot see anything on the workspace or it is present somewhere um somewhere on the corner of workspace so always remember try to fit your molecule to the workspace using this fit button or z button on the keyboard and it will fit everything for you so another thing which we will explore here is the different color schemes for this particular sequence so you can see here uh, in this sequence viewer if i simply right click on it you will find the option called different color schemes so you will have different colors by the name of chain name or you will have different thing by color by alpha carbon atoms 
or in the uh, let's imagine i want to find out the amino acid residues which are missing so where are the chain breaks where are uh, amino acid residues which are missing so for that we have simple color scheme called chain break so if i use this particular color scheme you can see here it will automatically highlight the region which is having break so for example it starts from n terminal so it start from residue aspartic acid 45 so that's the first break and then uh, sequence continues and in second line you will find there are some amino acid residues which are missing because of that you will have chain break so what is that so you can see in red color it is alanine uh, 211 and blue color which is uh, serine 217 so in between there are five amino acid residues which are missing so it has considered it as a chain break and same thing is also present here between uh, residue 363 and 383 so it means there are few chain breaks that you need to take care of in case of preparation of protein that we will see tomorrow but you can see here there are chain breaks in just one go and if you want to see it on the screen where exactly these chain breaks are so what i have done is i have simply selected those amino acid residues and i changed their view to let's say ball stick view and you can see it lies somewhere here Uh, so these are the two residues which are present here and i just uh, by doing just this fit to view i just see where it is present and you can see these are the amino acid residues which are not connected to each other because of this particular chain break so in this way basically you can explore where are this uh, where are such chain breaks present uh, in your uh, particular protein so let's see it in a more detail like uh, for example you can see here there is a con uh, there is a non continuation between uh, the amino acid residues so i just hide all those uh, lines let's say so using this i button using this i button i have i can show and hide the lines you can see here for the complete protein structure and you can see this green color this part is particularly missing so the same thing is also mentioned here so these are the amino acid residues which is having missing link so in this way you need to explore it one by one so let's say what is missing here in y and r so i just selected those two regions and press fit to view and it will show me where are these particular regions so one residue is here and another residue is somewhere here so it's a huge loop which is missing so in this way you can have different color schemes not only that but you can also have a secondary structure assignment so here is a option to have secondary structure assignment and this gives you a direct view what are the what are the secondary structure elements like alpha helix or beta sheet and what is the region which is present in amino acid uh, sequence so for example this uh, particular orange color helix starts from h to this h and you can simply select it using your mouse and you can uh, move your mouse on and it will simply select that particular region you can see where this region is present so basically this is yellow color uh, region and if i want to change the color of this particular region i can simply uh, change change the color with uh, let's say a particular single chain and it will change the color to green so in this way just select something whatever you want and change the color so let's let's try to change the color to red and we will see how it looks like so i just change the color from green to let's say red and you can see the i have changed the color of particular selection that particular helix so in this way you can play little bit with uh, all those options and you, as such it is pretty simple in case uh, if you give some time like it's just one time thing you just need to explore various option everything is present here and there is one of the very important thing uh, for analysis is the preset button so which is top middle button you can see here there are various type of presets present so at any time if i want to go back to the maestro default view just click on it and it will show you the initial view if i want to see the protein ligand interaction there is a apply custom preset button if i simply click on it it will show you show me the only ligand and amino acid residues which are surrounding which are interacting in the particular focus so these options we will explore further in case of uh, in our further exercise 
so other than that uh, let's see uh, if you want to see these labels or if you want to hide these labels as i said you have an option to label this is the apply label button so using that you can apply your label using this button you can hide the labels or also you will have this toggle button to uh, to show and hide the labels so you can always keep it on and off to see to uh, see the label or to hide the label not only that but you can also have the option to change the color of background at any time if you feel like background is not good enough for you so i can change it from black to white then off white and gray and any other color so there are many other colors also you can have you can use those colors if you want to use it so you can simply use this plus button to change the color of background not only that but uh, let's say if you feel like uh, labels are not visible or uh, i need to change the label size so that also option is present here in the font size you can increase the size of label you can decrease the size of label using these buttons so there are many options which are present that's the take home message is there are many options present here so if you are using stereo glass so for that you also have option to see it in stereo view so at some point if you feel like you, this is very common problem occurs so with many of the user their workspace navigator get hidden so to to show that workspace navigator we have this uh, button for workspace navigator sometimes such thing could appear and your workspace navigator will be completely off so you just need to go to this plus sign and on this workspace navigator and it will show you the original view so these are the various things which you can uh, see it from the visualizer there are various buttons which you will have one of the important thing again selection as i said if you simply click but quick selection is there if you click on p it will select the complete protein for you you can see here everything is selected and then you can change the view of this particular protein let's say and uh, let's see if you uh, you want to change the view of protein for example let's see here i just hide the labels and your protein is shown in ball stick view if i want to get rid of all those ball stick view i just select the protein and hide everything so this i button is for hide and if i want to do particular task with ligand so i can use this l button to select particularly ligand and using fit view i can see it of focus on the ligand and i can change once i have selected something i can change the view so always remember whenever you want to change the view or you want to change the rendering you need to select that particular thing so how to select it you can use these options once you selected it you can change the view or you can play with it so selection is must thing if you want to select something specific you will have option to define that particular selection here in define tab let's say i want to select amino acid residue 12 to 20 so i just type the number 12 to 20 add it and then say okay so it will automatically select that residue number 12 to 20 and i want to see it on the workspace so i'll just press this uh, sorry 12 to 20 amino acid residue are not present because it's a sequence start from 45 so we will change the sequence let's say 55 to 65 let's say that amino acid residue which i wanted to select so i just add it and say okay and i want to see where these amino acid residues are you can see here it is automatically selected in sequence but it is not shown on the screen so i'll just use this fit to workspace button or z button on the keyboard and it will show me where these particular amino acid residues are there. once i have selected it i can play with the rendering let's say i want to change the color to from red to yellow or to green so these things i can do with the whatever is selected if i want to change the rendering of this particular uh, amino acid residue wall stick or thin tube or fit tube or space field i can do it using this rendering option so most of the things are being covered Uh, related to the maestro uh, 
uh, one of the important thing is project table which you will have on the top right so this is the project table if you simply click on it it will show you the tabulated format so this table is simply as that of excel sheet you can uh, scroll or you can view various columns you can view various rows so these are the various things which are present with you for this particular uh, project whichever we are doing so there are three entries so far we have done with so this is what the project table looks like there are various properties which you can see in the property tree like name of the molecule what is path of molecule whatever things or whatever properties are generated from the molecule that you will see it in the consecutive lectures so this is what the project table is and so these three entries are with us again one of the most important thing which i always wanted to focus on you always need to remember what is selected so whenever blue color is on it is selected whenever blue circle is on it is present on the workspace so in this case our pcm entry is selected and 2p333 entry is present on the workspace so if i want to do same entry selected 2p33 and same entry is present on the workspace so in this way i need to play around with this option selection and what is on the workspace you always need to cautious about these things like whatever present on the workspace and whatever is the selected so uh, most of the time people come across these entries and they wanted to merge these entries so it's a simple exercise if you if you have protein and ligand separately you can simply merge it so let's try to do a exercise of splitting the structure let's say this is 2p3 structure and to split this structure splitting means nothing but i want to uh, split this particular molecule protein separate and ligand separate and water separate so i just need to right click on it and there is a option to split split by ligand water and other so i just split it so it will automatically create three entries called ligand 2p33 ligand 2p33 water and 2p33 protein so now i can see each entry one by one uh, on the screen there is a protein entry which is loaded then there are water which are loaded and basically waters are shown here in the sphere view and there uh, there is a ligand molecule which is present here so you can see there are various entries which are present with you for uh, once you do splitting so in case if you want to merge protein and ligand so you, that is also simple so just select the entries which you want to merge so select protein and ligand let's say right click on it and there is an option called merge so just merge it and it will create automatically create a new entry called 2p33 protein and 2p33 ligand so this is what the entry for protein and ligand you will have so that you can use it for further so this is the way you can split it let's imagine if i want to delete something from from let's say this entry if i want to remove ligand so what i would do i would simply select that particular ligand once it is selected there is a delete button you can see a d is for a, let's see right click on it and there is let's say delete bonds or there there can be a option to delete it you can see it here Uh, yeah let's say this is the ligand which i have selected from the workspace and there is a delete icon or you can expect it uh, or you can copy it separately so if i simply delete it it will be deleted from the list and now there is only protein left so in this way you can add you can merge entries you can split your entries you can delete if you want to delete something and it will automatically create one by one all entries for you so this is what is present with the schrodinger which you will have for further exercise always never remember in case if you are stuck at any given point always remember there is a help button this is the final option for you just go to help you will have all that option all tutorials all explanation links to the knowledge base you are all questions will be addressed here you will have option option to see various videos tutorial videos 
so everything is present in this help option if you simply click on help and help it will automatically open it in a browser and you will have all that help option present in here so everything is present here you don't need to worry about it if you have any question in mind you can simply search search here in the search bar let's say docking and it will give you me all options whatever is related to the docking so you can uh, spend time to read all that help uh, pages and everything will be explained there in this help uh, menu so this is what help menu you will have so i guess uh, everything is being covered with it so other than that if you want to save the image there is a workspace option here you can simply save the image and it will save uh, your image in various formats like png or tiff or p or jpg you can change the resolution of your image or you can change the size of uh, your image you can make your background transparent or smooth and all those things uh, you can do using uh, these options so that you can always use it uh, to create a high quality image so this is what you will have from the schrodinger uh, maestro so we just take a look like whatever we have done so far whether everything is being saved inside the inside the particular directory or not so for that i just at this point i just close the maestro just to show you like you have not lost anything even if you close your maestro so let's see this is particular option and uh, if you remember we have mentioned the project cad is the directory where we wanted to save your data so you can see here uh, you have this or the ligand which you have sorry the protein which you have loaded is saved you have image which you have saved so far is also present here so in this way also you have a project which is present with you uh, which you have saved so let's try to reopen the project again in the maestro and see if you will have all that information present whatever you have saved so far so let's see go to file open the maestro let's open the project and uh, need to see uh, where the directory is which is project cad and let's see here so you can see here once i open the project it shows me all that entries which whichever i was working on and everything is being loaded here in the same format wherever i closed so this is the way you will not lose anything though we did not save all those structures like pcm or uh, modified uh, uh, ligand molecule in the in specifically in the directory but still it is present in your project table so you will not have lose anything but if you want to save this pcm simply select your entry this in such way this blue color right click on it there is export option export structures and save it in the directory where uh, you you are supposed to save your all of the data so for example i am giving the name pcm and dot so the extension can be anything like mae pdb mol2 sdf or whatever you think but schrodinger always support mae format that's the maestro format so it is always suggested to use maestro format for your uh, ligand molecule to be saved so just give some name and format is maestro and here you will see like uh, the source structure source to be exported is from project table and selected entries so that you always need to worry about whatever is present in uh, selected whatever is present on the workspace so by default it is on you just need to save it and that's done so you can see the message appears here like structure pcm has been exported in this way you can export the structure and same thing uh, is also present inside the directory if you see inside our directory you will have this pcm entry so it means that the molecule is saved inside it if you want to again open it go to file import structure and fr from your directory you can see the pcm.ma is present here you can simply import it so this is specifically import structure so there are two imports like you should not go to open project or something you just need to go to import structure and that's it you can import you can export you can play with the molecule 
so these are the all things which are uh, very much uh, related to the maestro visualizer and you must know these things so spend some time to explore uh, maestro visualizer and i hope you will like it and as i said it is very much easy tool so that's the reason why i said spend some time and you will love it so with this i will conclude the session today's session don't forget to have a help option with you it answers your all of the question and at any given point if you feel your questions are not mentioned there it is not giving you the exact answer always please feel free to contact any of us and we are always there to help you out this is my team who are working in bangalore office so we are always ready to help you out with respect to your uh, scientific project or software support so you can contact us anytime and at the last i would like to say thank you all of you for joining us and listen the session carefully and i hope you like it and at the end uh, i would like to open the session for questions if you have i'm sure you will have a lot of questions once you try it thank you very much again uh thank you dr prachar for the session uh we have received a couple of queries um so i'll just read them out to you um so the first question is uh which operating system do you think is better for maestro is it windows or linux so um, i would always suggest to go with linux because uh, not only related to maestro but any type of molecular modeling studies you need to have you need to learn linux because because linux is a free platform and many softwares are only being supported uh, by linux so it is always better to work with linux for good graphics for good speed of visualization and for access of many different softwares including molecular dynamics simulation using desmon thank you uh for the answer uh, just an addition there um if you do not have linux do not worry about it maestro works completely fine on windows only when you are running the molecular dynamics you will require um linux if you are using schrodinger otherwise if you have a good graphics card and all your drivers are updated uh maestro works flawlessly on windows also uh, so the next question is i think it's for me uh whether this software is free so uh shorting is a commercial software um you have to purchase a licensed version um right now what you're getting the evaluation license which is a, a trial license just to evaluate the features of the shorting the software so that license that you receive right now is free um other than that as i told you shorting is a commercial license you have to have a uh you have to have a licensed version in order to use it uh so the next question is um can we open molecules drawn using other software like chem sketch in shodinger uh, yes uh if it is saved in uh, the format like mol2 or sdf or smiles or cdx so it depends on the format so if it is saved in such formats which are recognized in molecular modeling then yes definitely you can open it in master no need to worry uh the next question is uh where can we get the keyboard shortcuts is there uh, i think there is also question. a cheat so, sheet <laughs> as i said uh, you don't need to worry always you will have help button with you so let's see how to find the options keyboard shortcuts for you so as i said there is a help button in this help button first option you will find the keyboard shortcut so just open that keyboard sh shortcut option and you will find all type of keyboard shortcuts which are mentioned down here 
you can read it through and you can use those keyboard shortcuts for your exercise practice but as i always said try to use external mouse for your cat studies thank you um the next question is um organizers please inform if these training sessions will be available in your channels so uh, these training sessions will be available on jss and manipal's channel um, at least till end of this month uh, we will let you know till when we can actually keep them after talking to the um the it team at uh, jss um the next question is um uh, how to get 2d and 3d protein ligand interaction uh for example the bonds like hydrogen bonds um carbohydrogen pi alkyl pi sulfur etc so uh, yeah uh, all type of interactions we will see in molecular docking analysis uh, tutorial just wait for a while and uh, as i said like you can quickly visualize all type of interactions in 2d and 3d in our previous presentations and yes it is excited to see all those uh, things so we will see it in the le next lecture thank you uh, the next question is please provide link and evaluation license link on our email id so if you haven't received the e e the evaluation license link you can just write to us we have already sent it on your emails so if you haven't received it uh, you may just drop an email to us and we'll send you the link um so the next question is does the structures imported or drawn in maestro needs to be minimized so uh, as such it is already cleaned up so whatever structure you draw it automatically adjusts the bond length and uh, bond angles as per the ideal condition but at any given point if you feel like the structure is not well optimized then you can use option to minimize it but uh, by default in schrodinger uh, the structures is uh, automatically cleaned up so as such you don't need to worry about it but if you are not happy with it then definitely you can minimize it so we will have option to perform energy minimization as i showed thank you uh, so the next question is can i draw 3d stru structure of uh, my protein of interest with 3d if the 3d structure is not available using the primary amino acid sequence in maestro yeah so that methodology is called as homology modeling of the protein structure so whenever you have primary sequence of amino acid residue you can perform homology modeling uh, using prime module of the schrodinger suit and uh, yes in consecutive lecture we will have a tutorial on the same so please hold and we will learn it uh, in step by step manner hi prajwal i think the question is more to do with uh, can you just draw protein structures in this yeah uh, yeah i think uh, see uh, okay if uh, i have mistakenly uh, understand this question so whenever we talk about protein structure it has 3d fold but if you simply talk about building a peptide chain then yes using simple uh, amino acid residue sequence you can build a peptide uh, with let's say 10 or 15 amino acid residue long but that is called as peptide uh, structure but not a protein structure so if you are talking about protein structure then homology modeling is the option thank you for the clarification uh, the next question is can we save the 3d structure of ligands in different file formats in maestro uh, yes definitely as in the last exercise which i have shown you can just uh, export uh, the structure whatever is of your interest in various different file formats like like whatever you have heard in the molecular modeling like mol2 mol sdr smiles or whatever so all those options are present in the save menu thank you uh, the next question is also related to the file format um can we open a file in maestro with 
dot oeb dot gz file format so i think uh, maybe we can show how to see all the formats that are available to open in maestro i think you already showed but i think it'll be just yeah. nice to see That's it again better idea so i hope you can see the screen yes so you can just go to file import structure and in import structure you will have importable file types so here there is a huge list of various file formats so uh, to my knowledge everything is being uh, covered in this uh, all type of file formats but still if you feel like uh, you you want to search for any other file format so you can simply look into this list whether it is covered there so the file format which you have told i haven't heard of it so maybe you can elaborate more on it or you can save your structure uh, using whatever software you are using in any of the file format which are mentioned here in the list and then you can import this particular file format thank you for that um the next question is how can i download maestro software in my pc okay uh for that first you require is the website account once you have the website account if you go to www.shodinger.com um on top you will see a download icon or if some browsers will also have downloads written on top so when you click on that you will see the releases um you ha have to select the operating system you have and uh, make sure you uncheck the workflow option and uh, you click the eula acceptance and download um i think you already uh, some of you already received an email from our colleague kishore i think all the uh, links and everything is written in that um so half of you have received it already yesterday half of you will be receiving it today so um if you haven't downloaded it and you don't know you're not sure how to download it just please wait for that email if you have already requested for an evaluation license through the link that we have sent you we will be contacting you uh, but if you want to go ahead and download and install your software um you will find the download option on the home page on top and you can download your software there thank you liya maybe i can just quickly show it in a browser yeah that would be great so you just need to go to browser and type shodinger.com and it will yeah shodinger spelling should be correct it will uh, redirect you to our page if you have already activated account so you will have this uh, download button so you just need to download uh, login into your account and then uh, go to downloads so in this download button which is on the top you can see various releases so out of this like uh, it is always recommended to use the latest release so there are other releases option uh, releases are also present so download just the test release and you can choose the operating system whichever you want like linux windows or mac and then uh, as shelvia suggested to untick this option which is include nine workflow just untick this option and you need to agree on on the terms in this way just by ticking this option so operating system you have chosen you have untick the nine option you have tick the agreement and there is a version that's it just download it and it will download the complete software which might be around uh, 6 gb of the uh, file size and then you can install it so much fun thank you for showing that dr prachul uh, the next question is how to see command line interface So, yeah so as such uh, there is a direct command line interface in plus button you can see on the bottom right there is a plus button and here there is a option to on your command input area so 
So you can see here that this is a command input area in which you can type whatever uh, you think of. The command should be correct, and then uh, it will show you. Uh, I mean, it will give you option to uh, type all those commands. Other than that, uh, there is very unique feature in case of Schrodinger, and that the feature is called PowerShell. So if you simply type in search bar PowerShell. the power shell and you will get the option for schrodinger power shell this is schrodinger power shell and this is what the command line interface for schrodinger it is same as that of terminal in case of linux you will have all that option let's say you just need to type run command and any type of uh, option which you want to use and it will simply open this uh, particular things for you. Command should be correct, and you can run your commands also for anything. It's the same as that of Linux terminal. Right. Um, the next question is: How can we find the binding site in protein chair chains like A, B, C, D? Yes, uh, for that we will have a separate session on finding binding site using sitemap. So please hold on, have a patience, and we will have a separate session on it. day after tomorrow. Right, I think the next question also is on the same lines. Um, how can we select an active site pocket in Maestro? Yeah, I think we will say in the end, insert uh, day after tomorrow. Thank you. Um, so as a reminder, if you have any other questions, please add them to the list. Um, there were a couple of questions for me in the beginning. So I'll just go over them quickly. So the first question is, can we avail the discount for SOC? Not in this November 2nd session, but the next session later as we are busy. Um, so the answer is this discount code is valid till the end of this year so i think after november there will be one more session that you'll be eligible to use this discount code on so i think there will be one in december um that is the one that you can use but what i will suggest to you is like i know that this is only valid till the end of the year the only thing that you need to check or I will check and let you know in the next session if there is a session after this November because it is December and um, it could be very close to the holidays um, in our US office. Um, so I'm not sure if there will be a session after this November session. So what I'll do is um, please wait, I will make sure uh, if there is a session or not, and I let you know in tomorrow's session, right? Um, the next question is, um, I have downloaded the software and have the file workflow on the desktop. I have submitted the evaluation form. Can you please suggest me how to go further from there? Um, thank you for this question. Um, as I said, we have already sent some emails um, to you last night. So some of you have received the email from us from Kishore, how to download and proceed further. Uh, we are, we will be sending the next batch by today. So today and tomorrow. So you should be getting an email from us by today and by tomorrow where we will be sending you the instructions how to install and download this software and what information we need from you in order to give you the license right so please make sure that you keep checking your email we are working very hard to get you the licenses as early as possible um i know some of you are started to work already and they are you're really impatient about the whole 
not getting the license thing but uh, we assured you that we are working very hard to get you the license as early as possible uh, the people who have already sent us the machine id who we contacted yesterday last night will receive the license by end of the day today right and some of you will be getting emails from us on what information to send us today so please keep an eye on your emails you will be receiving email from uh, Kishore, uh, my colleague. So keep an eye on the email from Kishore. You should be getting it in your inbox. Don't worry about it. It won't go to promotion because we are sending you. Uh, it is not a mass email. We're sending by our personal emails. So I think you should be receiving these emails. So don't worry about it. The other thing is, um, some of you have uh, filled this form, but you do not need the evaluation. So uh, my request for you is please do not fill the form unless you need the evaluation license, right? Because uh, even if you've written in the comment, uh, we have to go through the entire, uh, your, you know, your submission and that might delay the licenses sent to others. So if you do not need it, if you only require the SOC, the Schrodinger online course, uh, we have already sent the discount codes for you. If you haven't received those, you can write to us through our email. You do not have to fill this form. If you do not need the evaluation license, which is the trial license, this license you will be installing on your machines, right? So if, you're, if you only want the SOC, which is different, that is showing the online course that starts on November 2nd. Um, for that, you don't have to fill this form. Okay. Um, the next question is, um, yeah, so I already told the SOC charges. It is $125. Uh, $125. It is till the end of this year. At least there is one session for sure, November 2nd. The second session, I have to check if there's any more before the end of this year or not. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, some of you, as I told already, yes, we will be sending you the licenses as soon as possible. You'll be getting uh, today or by tomorrow, the, all the emails will be sending out whoever has requested it. Um, you should be getting the license within the same day. Like, so for example, if you send the machine ID today, by end of the day, we will be sending you the licenses. Okay, so it is a very fast process. Uh, you should be getting it within one or two days. So don't worry about it. And we will be having the office hours till you have the licenses. So don't worry about that. The licenses, uh, you know, the office hours will stop. The office hours will not stop till you have the licenses. Also, if you have a lot of queries, you can always contact us. We can have like one-on-one -on -one sessions with you also. But uh, till you have the licenses, we will have office hours. We are also thinking to extend office hours. So we have two office hours instead of one office hours a, a week. So please don't worry about it. All your questions will be answered. You won't be just left with the license. And, you know, it, it is not like to fend for yourself. It is not like that. We will be there to help you out. Please don't worry about that at all. Right. Um, okay. How long you can use the dry licenses? Uh, so the, the license is valid for one month. Um, so the, these license that you, you will get will be uh, valid for one month. How these licenses work also, I received a couple of calls about that. So what license is, is uh, like how it works is if you receive the license today, the license is valid from today till 30 days from today, right? It does not matter when you install it. So it does not matter if you wait for five days and install it after five days. It does not mean that when you install it, it starts from that 30 days starts from there. No, the, the 30 days starts from 
the day it was sent to you okay so if you are busy right now and you don't want to take the license you have to be uh, very uh, like you have to be very assertive about it you have to write that in the form that you have sent us or send us an email um, especially in that form you have to write that to us that you don't want it to start from now and you want it to start in future and i will suggest like if you do not want it to start now please do not fill the form now if you already filled the form please let us know at the earliest so that we don't send you the forms uh, the licenses okay the other thing is um, if you are a student and you have um, filled the form you have to mention your guide's name or the hod's name uh we cannot as a company policy we cannot give you a license unless you send us the name of your um, hod's and supervisors okay so uh, i know a lot of you have written that um we will not be able to help you out in that because it is a company policy and we cannot um and you know uh, like once this license is out we cannot really see the usage what you're using it where you're using it so please as a student if you're applying for license we will require that information if you have not reply, uh, sent that information to us we will not be sending you a license so please uh, make sure that you mention that information as well if you are uh, new if you jo just joined this semester you have uh, you don't know your supervisor i should just wait then um you can get the licenses later once you are uh, familiar once you have a guide or you know you know the principal who is the principal i think it is very easy to find also through the websites and stuff but um, if you do not have the information that is okay uh you can get the license later um you can however go for the soc um because uh, there's you know you can use it to learn the software so you can uh, use the software on the cloud instance and play around with it you can learn um, the functionality of the software and you can use it like that but you will not be uh, doing your own research you will not be working on your own projects and you cannot download any data okay um so what is the difference between free software and the paid software um to buy a license for a student okay so the difference between a free software and paid software is that free software um you get all the modules okay that you have requested for and the paid license will have the the modules that you paid for or you got license for so that is the main difference in it um the other than that uh, the difference uh, might come that uh, like if you using a smaller machine and if you have a server license later so uh, uh, like right now the evaluation license will only work on one machine but when you get a server license uh, that could be shared among uh, the whole lab uh, as far as the cost is um, concerned uh, the cost is for academics is much much lower um you can write to me if you are interested in a purchase um as a student i wouldn't suggest you to buy it um uh, you should ask your guide or your department um to buy the software um so yes any other questions if you have i'll be happy to take them up I think that's all she'll be up from the chat box. Thank you then. Thank you Kashik. Um thank you everybody for submitting your questions. As I said, we have a uh, an email dedicated to this webinar CD ddcourseassuring.com. So if you have any questions, please write to us and we will try to answer as soon as possible. Uh regarding the evaluation license, please watch out for your emails from uh uh from kishore so you'll be getting emails from kishore um to how to 
further proceed and how to get the licenses. Um, if you want a license and you haven't filled the evaluation form, uh, please do so. Uh, if you do not have the link for it, please write an email, we'll send you the link for it. Um, that's it from my end. Uh, thank you all for joining today. Uh, thank you all the panelists and uh, the JSS IT team for hosting this session. Thank you all for attending and for the questions. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for another demo session. Um, have a great day. Bye-bye. We just got one more question. Do you want to take it? Um, sure. Is it possible to publish data from student license? Yes. So when you receive the evaluation license, if you have enough data, you can publish. Um, if you receive enough data to have a paper out of that one month evaluation license, yes, please feel free to um, publish it. Please make sure that you um, cite our software correctly. And yes, the answer is yes. And some people are still asking for the link for evaluation form. So for the link for the evaluation form, uh, can we just drop the link in the YouTube chat? We can do that. Um, okay. So we'll just do that. We'll drop in the link for the evaluation form in the YouTube chat. If you miss it, just write to us and we'll send it to you. Make sure that you are registered to this course um, before you apply for evaluation. That's it. Okay. Thank you then. Thank you for the additional questions. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye. We can stop the live session here.